How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Rule Thirds, your favorite film culture podcast, because my name is Larry. My name is Sean. My name is Max. How you guys doing? Yeah, that's uh, complicated. Oh, really? Very, very complicated us. question. Uh, well, well um, your shoot ended, Max. Focus on the positive yeah. on there. Yeah, it did. Uh, we got a lot of great footage. The actors thought I was a great director. Um, awesome. Yeah, the crew members were impressed, and uh, yeah, we got everything done before we lost our minds, so I'd say <laughs> it's a success. Well, looking forward to the post-production process at all? Uh, my roommate slash producer is editing it, and he's great, so I, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing whatever he's got for us. Cool. Well, awesome. speaking of post and editing, uh, I spent oh, cool. all afternoon from 12.30 to 5.30 uh, with the director and director of photography slash writer. Uh, of the senior film oh, wow. and editing Purick uh, in the editing bay. And there was much arguing because we're at that final push where everything is permanent and it's kind of this like, you know, are we overthinking it? Are we too close? No, you're too close. Uh, it's, it was fun though. We did got a lot of good work done. It's looking, looking good. So awesome. I hope it would post it online soon, but they say probably oh, not until like man. end of summer, depending on film festival rules. And Max uh, was all about that too. So I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what you were at, what you were working on. You know, Same with you, get a file. Course. I could probably get a file and like send it to you. If it's not posted publicly, I, I don't think I'm ruining anything. I'll double check with them. So I, you can yeah. you can see it. And same with Max. I think I can show it to people privately, cool. and it won't affect anything. So yeah, that's been yeah. my uh, few last few days. Just finishing up. We're trying to reach picture lock by Friday. So. Awesome. Well. Yeah. If just to bring it up, just as something today, I began work on my first experimental film. Ever. Wow. Well, I'm it's, gonna. Uh, I remember yeah. my first experimental film. Never. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. <laughs> I didn't think I'd actually, ever be saying true. that. That's not true. I actually did do one for an assignment. Oh, you did? Like that was the point. It had to be no dialogue and not narrative. And it was basically the idea was to get a series, and it was supposed to be silent. And so my idea was to get a series of images of things that have an unmistakable sound, and to kind of you know it would be kind of fun to watch and let your own memories fill it in so i got footage of like bowling or car tires um, there was some uh-huh. other like very noticeable you know, well-known sounds i remember yeah it, it was it was fun you know some good yeah. shots eh. <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just we're all talking about film school stuff so uh it's gonna be an interesting ride working on that edit um but uh anyway enough about all of our how we're doing in our film school stuff sean give us a little bit of the community segment won't you all right well we were a little bit behind you have to forgive us uh, so I have some. I have a comment from the Zootopia review that we just totally forgot about to do on the three top three favorite t- TV shows live action video uh, right. p- episode, and it was Whitley, and he said that I'm that he's glad I addressed his uh, my biggest his biggest problem. I have a hard time switching the the first uh, third person when I'm reading these <laughs> comments. Uh, he said I'm glad John addressed my big problem with Mad Max Fury Road's message, lack of nuance. Um, I don't. That's definitely a. Uh, that's that's I mean that's a that's a part of it. That's it's a, correct, that's a part of it. But I worry that, that oversimplifies it in itself, like because it's not <laughs> quite that it's that. It's that it it pretends to be saying something detailed, in, and it's in such a blunt, ineffective way that kind of upsets. Anyway, um, it also anyways anyways, Utopia was a good buddy cop movie, a decent Pixar imitator, a great Disney film, an all around good film. Huzzah! I would disagree Pixar with the decent. Imitator. Yeah, exactly. This is yeah, not I a think Pixar it's a movie. dream. I think they feel it's a DreamWorks imitator. If anything, I, I think it's like the Disney movie, as far as I'm concerned. Like it's very by the book, but it's incredibly yeah. well executed. It has the you know decently yeah, I, I modern never, humor. I've never really been a fan of the idea that any anime movie that's like really good is like a Pixar imitator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like I feel like Pixar has a very distinct style to how they do their movies. Yeah, not every not animated movie is movie. a Pixar this movie. Just, this yeah. just isn't a Pixar movie. And it's Talking Animals, so there you go. Disney. Yeah, it's talk, <laughs> Talking Animals. Hey. Pixar has done Talking Animals once with Brave. Well, no, the, the bears didn't talk, did they? No, I think the bears They've not growled. done Talking Animals. They, did not, they have not done oh, Talking wow. Animals yet. Holy, oh, that's, supposed, that, that, that's ironic because they've done talking everything Bugs else, life, so that's like but just not anyway. animals <laughs> and cars. Uh, and uh, then on our wait. three top three favorite TV shows, live action. That's a mouthful. Uh, we have mm. from Seth says top three are The Daily Show and The Nightly Show. He says a tie. I say Aww. tie is cheating, so I'm going to give it to the, Daily oh, Show. You're really going to put The Nightly Show. Yeah, well, the nightly show's good, but I wouldn't put it on the daily show. We're gonna give it your number, your number four there, Seth. Yeah, uh, ties are a cop out. Uh, number yep. two is Downton Abbey, which is odd, Seth. I did not know 
uh, I don't know how to word that joke properly. You're not the demographic is would be the punchline. That's very surprising. But I've heard good things. I'll yeah, probably check. I hear it's sometime. good. I hear it's good. Yeah. Now that it's over, I have a thing where I don't I don't watch popular TV shows until they over. I watched the Breaking Bad pilot literally the day the finale aired. Oh my so. god! Same. Same. <laughs> yep. That was, was crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, he's a, and his number one is Mash. Perfect in every way. Honorable mm. mention, 70s live action Spider Man series, everyone else hates but he loves. Oh, wow. Daredevil and Mystery Science Theater 3000, Ned's Declassified. Oh, uh, that was a good one. And then Ned's Doctor Who, I need to watch Genesis of Daleks. I know. Everyone, as in my one friend who's a big Doctor Who fan, tells me to watch Genesis of the Daleks. I probably will. He has it. And then he has an idea for us, which I love top three favorite web shows. Ooh, which would be tough because like, are we talking like a content producer? Because, you know, they might make a, multiple kind of shows of their style or is it very yeah. specifically like the one show with that name? You know, so we'll talk mm. about it. But I think yeah, that's we'd what have we'll to definitely make, do. Yeah, we'd have to kind of create the rules when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. But I love it. Love it. Yeah, it's so a good idea. We'll get we to that for sure. It. Yeah. And uh, is that it? That, yeah, that's our community. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Um, all right. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about the very gritty, the, 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 gritty, yes, the, the nitty and gritty. very broodingly gritty Batman yep. v Superman Dawn of Justice. Zack Snyder Which, and David Gore. Yours well, uh, <laughs> next. To be honest, that title's uh, grown on me. I just want to yeah. say I like that title now. What? So. Oh, Don it's just Justice. people made fun of you know Batman Superman Don Jazz. It's a lot, but I like it now. Just want to say that. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a good title. I just I don't think this should have been called V Superman. I think it was just kind of weird. It's not a court case, Snyder. Um, or is but, it? Yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> oh, no. um, don't give it away, Larry. Yeah. The the internet has spoken. The critics have spoken, but we have yet to speak on the subject. Mm, it's true. Uh, easily, easily one of the most anticipated films of the year, and one of the most interesting in regards of response. Yeah. Uh, s- so um, you guys know how this works. We start off by giving our little theses and uh, we give a score. And then we uh, – I guess because this is Batman v Superman because there is a lot to spoil. Yeah, We uh, will is keep there, it – I was yes. going to say I think this is going to yes. be a big spoiler-free section because yeah, – Well, I think it will we be make... a big spoiler-free section. But I think the spoilery section will be loaded with some important details that I think okay. we should discuss. Yeah. Uh, so we are – for this review – Uh, Because we kind of do the spoiler section on a review-by-review basis. Uh, So this uh, episode will have a spoiler-free section. And if you listen carefully, which I hope you do, uh, we'll notify you when the spoiler red tape is going up. uh, Where we'll be discussing uh, some serious spoiler stuff. Uh, Because the host never goes first, I'm going to ask Max to give his thesis on Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. (sighs) Oh my god, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh my god, I can't wait. No... In the years that I've been going to film school, I've become more and more like on team superhero movie as opposed to team Marvel or DC because I'm just so tired of snobs just just denouncing the entire genre, format, whatever it's called. But oh my god, guys, BVS is kind of BS. It's <laughs> really, it's quite bad. I think some of the things it does is not so bad, but it's a structural mess. Its story makes no sense. It's characters have are it's actors are given barely anything to do it's female characters that feel like ragdolls it's main villain is basically diet joker but even more obnoxious than you'd think <laughs> and overall it's really just kind of a big old bash of nothing it's it really like the wb really does think that the reason why marvel movies are successful is because of the easter eggs and the hints at other movies when that was never the case and that will never be the case so yeah bvs kind of sucks and I didn't want to be the one to say that because I'm, you know, even though I am a fan of DC and Marvel, I, you know, I, I root for Zack Snyder and now I can't do it anymore. So BBS is a three out of 10. It's Ooh. bad. Oh man. I was excited to hear it and, and, uh, fulfillment indeed. Sean, uh, that, was give us... over, that was a bit overblown, <laughs> much like the movie. Ah, well, Sean, Meta. please give us your thoughts, please. Okay. The thing about Batman vs Superman that I could never escape for. I feel like with Sean, I hate to interrupt, but like with Sean, there's always a thing with the with your with each movie. I like that. Which I I like. Yeah, which I I have an angle to approach the movie. I do it with preview too. I don't cover trailer without an angle. Mm. I. It's something I've not. The thought that it's the same phrase that keeps popping into my head whenever I whenever someone talks about Batman vs Superman in any context, and whenever I think about it, 
in terms of its its own tensions or its own character things in in every sense that I can possibly approach this movie I don't care now do not confuse this with not caring about the emotional stakes of the film or the character strife though that is true what I mean is I don't care about this movie I care if I'm upset about a movie I care if I like it I I just I just don't care I am sick of this weird divide and I'm stuck in the middle here because I am sick of the people just tearing it apart, jumping on this bandwagon because I think there are things that are legitimately good. But I am also very upset at this bizarre 10 out of 10 wave of people calling this just the best superhero movie of all time and all this. I'm so sick of it. They are completely in denial because this is a broken mess. It is not a good film. I hate being in this middle ground and just not caring Max, you told us to wait a bit to do this review, right? Maybe wait, see if you can see it. Do you want to know why I was so eager to agree? Because I was hoping it would go long enough that we would just cancel the review. I don't care about Dawn of Justice. I'm going to try to pitch in. I'm going to try to have strong... I don't. I don't care. Nothing in the movie made me care, and nothing was offensively bad the other way to make me care negatively. I just don't care. I give it a five. I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> John, you, you seem to have more of a problem with the people who talk about the movie more than the movie itself. Yes, because may I repeat, I don't care about the movie. <laughs> hmm. oh, okay, In- interesting. Right. Um, despite the fact that we have a me- we have a five and a three, I seem to somehow be in the middle ground of both of you. Um, I'm not gonna lie, my expectations for Batman v Superman were extremely low. And while I and while you may recall, if you've seen some of our past episodes, I agree, I admitted that Batman v Superman was either going to be amazing or a complete disaster. And I will man up to the fact that it was neither, in my opinion. While I am interestingly surprised at how many elements I actually did enjoy in Batman v Superman, I am not going to call it a good film. Um but I, I can, I'm going to go into all the specifics, but I think the big picture idea here is that with any other film, really, uh, or, you know, all my favorite films, just when I think about movies that I enjoy to watch, I feel invested. I feel like I, I, I am sitting there and I believe everything I'm seeing and I'm really getting into this story and call it whatever you want. It's a lot of different factors mixed in together, but I didn't really – I kind of agree with Sean in, in, a, in an aspect. I didn't really care watching Batman v Superman. When I walked out, I was like, well, I was not invested in this at all. I don't care about any of these characters. I didn't care about the story, where it was going to go. And that's really what tipped it, tipped the scale for me personally. Uh, I was at a five for a while, but just because of – and you know, considering it does a lot of things wrong, in my opinion, I am going to be giving uh, Batman v Superman a 4.5 out of 10. Huh. Uh, so not exactly in the middle, but you know, I'm still kind of in the middle ground between the both of you. So we have, I think it's bad. Yeah, it's really not good, and I don't care. It's so, I, I, and honestly, I would describe it as a very mixed bag, balanced out in the middle. The five is not me just trying to come across as I don't care. That's right, yeah. genuinely the the score I would give it. So, of course, right as as is assumed. Of course, these were um, very long. Yeah. Yes. It's a, um, yeah, but so was the movie. Yeah, you already used yeah, that. Yeah, so anyway. was so was <laughs> the movie. Um, so. so Let's 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 just talk about the I think something that you two brought up that I really think that we should bring up is the structure, which I think is definitely oh, uh, a, a mess, if any. Yeah, because this... that was that was like one of the big concerns walking into the film is because we know that they're juggling so many different things. Uh, and we 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 kind of knew that they were just it was going to be too much. And of course, it is well, too much. It's weird. In some ways, you're right. And then sometimes it was too little. Because interestingly, not that much happens in this movie. It, as a whole, it kind of feels inconsequential. Uh, did anyone else kind of feel that? Like, I, I don't know. Just at the end, it didn't feel like ah, that much was, was was earned slash learned. Oh, yeah, slash... it definitely didn't feel earned. Without, without, I mean, with, sure. without giving away the thing that happens at the end, which we absolutely avoided talking about. Yes, um, I, I I don't really know. Like, apart from that, yeah, not really much was gained or yeah. lost. It was just kind of a thing that happened. Yeah, so yeah. the structure is a mess. We can agree on that yes, right now. Absolutely. Right? Well, just, yeah. You know, there's there's a philosophy, uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone. They say that in storytelling, thing uh, scenes should be lined up by how, how by sequence. Like this happens, therefore this happens, therefore this happens, then this happens. Like 
It's all about sequence, all about continuing a story. This movie, I think it's trying to like it's trying to like break the record for how many freaking scenes have nothing to do with each other lined up next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'll just I'll I'll put it up now. I was gonna like build to it, but it's kind of like what I keep coming back to. I I read it somewhere, and I wish I could credit the person that said it. Uh, Max, you'll have to take our word for it, but Larry, maybe you'll agree with here. Uh, this this movie is a Game of Thrones episode. It's it's really? just jumping through different storylines. There's no actual um, like structure to it. And I'm not saying the quality is there, obviously, but you get the comparison where each episode uh, yes. of something like Game of Thrones it doesn't actually have like that much of like a build as a whole. It's just kind of the scenes played out and sometimes there's like some thematic tie, but very rarely that's this. Yes. It's this storyline. Mm-hmm. Then what's going on with Lex Luthor? And then, Oh, let's go back to Superman. Let's go back to Batman. It's just a nonstop jumping between storylines. And it's so quick. That's what this movie is. It's a TV episode. That's what it Except feels like the entire it's time. It's a movie. That's the yeah, problem. Well, okay, it's more a TV season given how long it is. Yeah, but you oh, can't Lord. you can't really, you know, cuz I get I understand your comparison and I kind of agree with you, but it's you can't pull that off with a movie. Right, exactly. It just, does, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> TV yeah. can get away with that cuz you just have an hour uh, and you see what happens in your favorite character storyline and then you go on about your week till next time. But with this, yeah. oh, for two and a half hours of just jumping and of course, you know, at the end they do all come together, you know, like uh, kind of <laughs> motivation's unclear but they do so at least we can give them that <laughs> that's um, true uh i just like this also reminded me a lot of amazing spider-man 2 in a lot of ways because i felt this is a, this is a problem i wouldn't say the it, they were juggling too much but i feel amazing spider-man 2 at least in my opinion did do this thing where we sort of jumped between scenes and we it was just sort of we couldn't we we never lingered on one scene long enough we were sort of too busy dealing with other things of course it doesn't do this nearly as much as batman v superman this this um, is what happens when you try to make a universe in one movie. You just yeah, exactly you yeah. fall on your face. You people just don't understand. Marvel Marvel took its time. It was patient. Patience is a virtue. And when you're building a universe, you gotta ease us into this. You cannot just just like try to eat an entire plate. Wait. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Oh my god, he tried to put like, an algae and it failed. Oh. Uh, you can't just eat an entire turkey in one bite. You gotta pick it one at a time. Perhaps once every right. two, you know, twice you a year. It. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. saved it. You saved it. Good for you, buddy. Um, but uh, I agree, and I think this sort of works with another big point that I have about the film is that all of this Justice League buildup that the film does a lot, I feel is just is you know just the nail in the coffin really for me because you know D- DC has um you know my one of my biggest reasons I don't like DC over Marvel for the longest time is their lack of patience and they're just sort of their shortcutting. Um and here it's at its absolute forefront. I think that while I like Wonder Woman as a character and I oh, like Oh, don't don't you dare. No. She yeah, was the Wonder only Woman was really actually awesome was better implemented into the plot than I expected. I expected well, she was that she'd awesome. like throw in. Yeah, we'll get we'll, okay. get we'll get to the character. Again, though but, I liked Wonder Woman as a character, as I'll say again, I feel like if she was not included in the film, we also took away that weird side plot with the meta with, you know, the whatever. Right. Um it it would have it would have taken, you know, it would have just been even more smooth. And I feel like the film is just kind of preoccupied in this. We got to make sure this stuff happens so that way we can do that in the next movie. And it's distracting and it takes away it, a it lot is. from the main conflict. And the big, big hint heading into Justice League that we uh, will talk about in spoiler section, it doesn't make any sense. But at least nope. it felt kind of like the plot kind of moved that forward. Like I, I at least understood that. In fact, that was one of the points of the movie I actually enjoyed was at the very end when it kind of felt like, oh, that is actually substantial uh, as we move forward in this new series. Very troubled series, um, but the <laughs> the the thing with Wonder Woman and and of course we won't go to spoilers yet. But you know the stuff I'm talking about that hints at, at upcoming movies, specifically some other uh, yes leaguers. Basically, if for those that are wondering, haven't seen it, and I think you'll agree. Basically, the movie pauses and plays three post credit scenes for you, and then goes yes. and then continues, and it's it's just bad. It's, it's just bad. And, you know, you know, Sean, you and I, you know, kind of are at arms. At, at, is that the phrase? Yeah, whatever. They, we sort of – we have our disagreements about Marvel and their, you know, uh, yeah. universe a, integration. But we yeah. can both agree here. It's not good. Right. It's, it's bad. I'm a huge proponent of, hey, this is an interesting experiment. Let's do the crossing over. Let's do the hints. But the way they did it here is just literally like, yeah. hey, look, it's that person. And then they show this the next movie, one and – this movie is a two and a half hour post credit scene. Yeah, 
Well, no, that's not fair. Oh, that's part of the I don't movie. Think that's fair. I don't that's not fair. There's a lot of movies in here, and that goes back to the structure. If I yeah. work it back to that original. Point, yes, of where course. People have said it. I'll just say it again. Where there's a Batman movie in here, there's a Man of Steel sequel in here. There's honestly a Lex Luthor movie in here, and then there's a setup to Justice League movie. And, and I'm not saying all four of those should have been independent movies or warranted their own, you know, two hour, ninety minute, whatever runtime, but. This, this was a lot to try to fit into one movie, and we've already established that it didn't work. And nope. I think if you lost – I don't honestly don't think they care if it hurt the quality because I, I – again, I can go with you. They're rushing. So they yeah, don't yeah. care if you some know, of us – Sean, yeah. Sean, you are talking more than either of us, and you started this review with I don't care. I'll I try know. my best to throw my hat I into know. the ring. As, I, I take universe building very seriously. So I'm yes. getting a little upset. And yeah, the structure too. is and like it's... the only big big negative point that I would really want to to like chime in yeah. on. So I will be backing down, don't worry. <laughs> hmm. Um but uh yeah, anything else we want to put I think we all kind of got our points across. We know why the yeah. structure's bad. Um I want to bring up the writing. One of my biggest problems in my it was mm-hmm. the writing. And now let me, now, you know, the trailers, it's very interesting if you watch the trailers after you see the movie. The trailers really do pick and choose the the the, the lines that really work. Of in the film, uh, you know, Lex Luthor has all of these really philosophical lines, and you know that make him that paint him as these really this really deep and perplexing character. Uh, but when you but when you're watching the film, it's basically sixty percent expository dialogue and forty percent philosophical BS. That that and it, it's never a good flow between them. You notice the movie basically just stops in the middle or stops in certain parts to just have this philosophical conversation. And it, they, most of them end up don't really end up going anywhere. I feel there were so many stuff like Superman is this villain to society, a menace to society. No, he's a he's a wonderful god. They bring it up so many times, and I never feel like it's a real conclusion. Like I never feel like we. And I understand that n- neither one side is is perhaps right or wrong, but I feel like we don't get. We're too busy having this huge fight scene uh, with this you know big monster at the end. Yeah, now that Lex it, creates. This is you know, ultimately so. maybe that's why it doesn't feel consequential is because this is an ultimately pointless movie. Yeah, in terms it really of like what it's go, saying, yeah. it isn't. I guarantee Civil War will have something to say about probably meta ness about superheroes or at least about their own characters. But this matchup, what the hell is this movie about? Nothing. Like seriously, it's it's. I mean, I never even thought of that for a second. It has it, it has some really good ideas that it does not. Yes, that, that should it be just pointed drops out. to sound smart. Yeah. But on the positive side, the writing's a good enough time for me to come in. I think I've said this before. That that second trailer for, for for this movie, where it opened with the Bruce Wayne Clark Kent scene at Lex's party, was this breath of fresh air because it was actually a character driven conflict through yes. dialogue. Like yep. the, I, the 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 notion of something like that happening in a Man of Steel sequel was just unheard of. Like in my head. Hold like on, just, hold on. <laughs> are you talking? Oh, hold on, hold on. Stop right there. Quit your. Man, still bashing. Are you saying that the scene where Lex Luthor at, tells Ben Affleck to say, I wouldn't get – or tells Bruce Wayne, the I wouldn't get in a fight with Clark Kent? Like before Lex gets there, yeah. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that scene is probably one of the worst scenes I've ever watched, actually. That one little thing is so abundantly awful. is so but, abundantly but, terrible in its writing. May it's I just, so bad. Sorry. May, may I finish? Because I want to be yeah. positive for a second. <laughs> that leads me to something, and I think the writing has a lot to do with it. We talked about the structure. It's a huge mess. This film as a whole obviously does not work. It's troubling. That being said, specifically, I think the scenes themselves are fine to good to mediocre, I guess. And there are bad mm-hmm. moments, of course. But as I was watching it, the scene for scene is so much more competent and like thought out and well acted like the actors actually are doing something. They're not doing a lot. That's not really their fault, but they are doing stuff. <laughs> and I understand motivation uh, sometimes <laughs> it was just, such a, it was just such a step above what I expected that the individual scenes were fine that I have to defend it in that respect. I think Snyder directed it better. I think the actors acted better. I think Chris Terrio s- saved whatever garbage Goyer gave him and tried yep. to make something out of it. Yep. Who already was trying to save the garbage the studio told him to force into one movie. Mm. So honestly, it, 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 the, the, the minute to minute was all right. 
given the circumstances. Uh, I I would agree with you. Maybe in seriously arguing, scenes. this is is better than Man of Steel. Are you serious yes. right now? Oh my god! At least they have a cohesive plot. Look, at least they have something. I'd, I'd to argue say. this is also better than Man of Steel. Let me I'd say, say this. No, let me say this. Let me say this. Correct. This this is a mediocre mess. Man of yes. Steel is a pristinely structured pile of garbage. <laughs> it is it's incredibly not, well but... structured. It has Act One, Two, Three. It has a build. That's its main villain. I get that, but the scene for scene is just so horrendously handled and nonsensical and laughable. It is far worse than this movie. This is a huge step up. If Justice League is no, this much better, say it's, even it's that gonna coherently... be a good movie. I wouldn't even say the story is even that as coherent as you're saying. I think the beginning is <laughs> really mishandled how they handle the flashback stuff. Um, but the reason I just like this more than Man of Steel is just there were a couple of aspects of it that I enjoyed personally that I'll get to uh, later. Uh, but what I what, what I like to point out, uh, you know, I, I, Sean, I would agree with you. A couple of scenes are good. Like they have some good character interactions. But I think that the problem with those is that they don't go anywhere because this this movie is so not character driven. Right. Like I love I love the conflict between Batman and Superman. I think that's a very fascinating like that scene at Lex Luthor's party is like a is a great scene that could have added to this wonderful you know character v character movie. It's like he has Wait. a philosophy. What? I think I figured it out. That scene we keep coming back to represents the whole movie. You well, got what these two characters who are been. arguing. Like, they have these two characters arguing. Like, it's it's pretty interesting. I kind of like the ideologies at war. And then the actual <laughs> worst part of the movie steps in and makes it super obvious and actually makes this really cringeworthy. Uh, that wow. we'll, get, a, we'll get to Eisenberg later. Should we just get now. to characters? No, I want to finish this point. No, please. no. Let, let, I want to finish, let finish the point. Finish what, if I can even remember it. Right. Okay. So, uh... I just like the, there is a great conflict, and as and I think it should be brought up that despite the fact that I hate giving credit to Snyder or Goyer, there are good ideas at play here. I like the idea of whether because that's really not something we've explored in a Superman movie before. Is like shouldn't we be kind of afraid of Superman? Like yeah. super, you know we shouldn't There's be immediately trusting him. Yeah, and then I love. Batman, like, I think it's kind of hypocritical. You know, like, I love that, you know, his philosophy, I love how Superman's philosophy uh, philosophy clashes with that, clashes with that, excuse me. And even though we'll get to Eisenberg in a second, I think based off of his writing, there are spurts of dialogue from Lex Luthor that are interesting philosophies that, if given to an actually competent writer, <laughs> could actually have worked into this very interesting, there's the, like way more depth in character. And I think that's just really – I just want to bring that up because the writing was just so obnoxious. We get these expository moments that just didn't really do anything and then we'd stop and we'd have the moments basically – we'd have moments where characters were throwing garbage of like you know deep brooding questions at us and they would talk about important things. But oh, no, we can't do – we can't pause for too long because we have to fight Doomsday. You know, it's like – it's it's just – I just – the writing really bothered me. It's one of my least favorite parts of the film. My last kind of point um, on it that I will bring up about the whole like philosophical angle, because as much as I do say the minute for minute is fine, um, the the whole phil- phil- uh, philosophical aspects are, of course, butchered. And what it reminds me of kind of what you were describing it, did you guys ever see the Netflix show Master of None? I watched a couple episodes of it. Right. My problem with that show is that it all it does with its issues that it tackles, and as much as I, I honestly do agree with like all the things that it says and stuff basically what it does is just has the characters in the show just talk about an issue like there's there's an episode on um how, you know having parents who are immigrated here and like how different your yes, world is from your parents and that. like Absolutely. that's great but the episode is just kind of them talking about it and it doesn't actually like i don't know it didn't it, didn't, it felt it felt you know anti show don't you know show don't tell kind of thing and so that's one step that I think is bad, where all you're doing is just talking about an issue, but at least you re- they've reached a conclusion before the credits roll. I get that. So Batman vs. Superman takes it another step, and apparently Snyder thinks having deep themes is just mentioning it. Yeah, just talking about it. <laughs> like, it didn't even talk it all the way through. It was just... Yeah, just, Lex just says dropping it. Yeah. Some, something about God and omnipotence. <laughs> it's like, are you going to do yeah. something? No, uh, I'm not doing wow. anything. That was a terrible Lex Luthor impression, but so was yeah. Eisenberg's. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, Okay, hey, oh. speaking of which, <laughs> before See, we get to uh, Eisenberg... Is, I'd like to just step in here. You know, Sean, you, you, you talked about how like you don't, you don't like the bandwagoners, I guess like me, apparently. 
But you guys hate on Snyder just like most cynical comic book movie fans. I don't nope. think he can tell a story to save his life. Nope, he cannot. I'm not about to like, you know, pay, make personal. Max, I, I, Max, didn't, look, I didn't make I, any personal look, attack. Look, I didn't make any personal attack either. I'm just saying yeah. that I lo- I look. I'm not saying Snyder is a bad filmmaker. I'm not. I, mean, I, I, th- I, I think 300. I like. Even though he is, I'm not gonna like try and make that like. I don't think he's. I don't think he's a bad filmmaker in certain instances. I, I like 300. I like Watchmen. Those are good movies. But he All had. Right, Larry, let's let's let, let's put the Snyder thing too bad. Let's just yeah, do this. We right should move on. Oh, well, the okay. reason why Zack Snyder became big was because he was able to take stories that other people told and tell them beat for beat. That is 300. That is Watchmen. Well, I, I was love about. Watchmen. I, I was about to movie. say that. So you know. But whatever. that's and then you gave him the keys. To Man of Steel and Don Justice. And even though he did not and write Sucker those Punch. movies. And Sucker Punch. And Sucker Punch. Don't forget about Sucker Punch. Okay, that was yeah, terrible. Whatever. Okay, okay, whatever. The Same. point is, though he's not the person who creates the story, he's the one who, he is, in some respects, the one who tells it, and he cannot tell a story that is, that is his own, in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, like, the only stories he's good at telling are the ones that are already made for him. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's basically right, we're it. We're spending a lot of time. We should get to characters. I know, which... Which let's before we get to Eisenberg, who we're gonna have plenty to talk about him clearly. Uh, let's briefly mention uh, the two uh, main characters. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be brief. Uh, yeah, um, I hate Superman in this movie. I think Superman's a blundering idiot throughout a lot of it, and uh, a lot of his choices made no logical sense. Uh, and he doesn't seem to really know how to do anything right. And uh, then he is, you know, a really big jerk to Batman for no reason. He's just I, like he just scowls at Batman, and he just is like, I "You're would lucky I'm not. That, but you're lucky I'm not killing you." And I'm like, Sup- "Superman, chill." You know, I'm like, "Come on, come on, Superman, don't don't be like that." Like his character's all over the place. Sometimes he's this nice guy. Other times he's this serious. You know, tear. He almost tears up. And then other times he's just scowling at Batman and being rude to him. Like I just, I just, Man oh, of Steel. Oh, poor precious little Batman. I'm so tired of this. Listen, listen. I'm not about to say that Superman was not a what was not was a well written character because he wasn't because none of the characters were well. Oh well, that too. But he wasn't well written, well acted. I either. would say this. I would say this as a Superman fan. Yeah, he was like he was not he was handled badly, but his his anger at Batman was actually explained too much. Like it was brought up like three freaking times. It's <laughs> like okay, dude. We got it. You don't like Batsy w- because he does all these things that you know, are not totally, you know, exceptionally great. You know, he he sometimes does things that are not so great, and I get that. But like, so it's just no. I'm I'm really not into the whole like Superman is an idiot who does not you know who, who likes Batman for no reason. There are clear signs that are explained four times over. Larry, you're doing this thing where you're making me defend this movie, and I just I, I don't I don't want to do that. I, <laughs> okay, I really just well, don't let me just point that. out that if he was a well written character, we'd get a little bit more development into that side plot and not just repeated the same thing four times see i think that he just hates super he's so dumb sorry he's the thing here's the thing about superman you know that that joke that or not really joke but kind of like this thing that goes around that it's kind of like this common awareness or something that superman is a boring character right like yeah, uh, just you hear it's, that, it's right? a wrong well, analysis I mean, but you know it's a consensus. No, but seriously you've yeah. heard that like people just say yeah, yes superman's born oh, boy scout oh, i'm just so, so perfect and untouchable. yeah really right and it, that, there's a very good reason why that's like the popular like awareness of the character. It's because this is a very very difficult character to get right to make interesting. Right, yeah. If you don't have a good storyteller, a great storyteller at the helm, this character is going to be bland and uninteresting and boring. And um, Max, what what do you how would you judge Zack Snyder as a storyteller? I, I, I can't don't remember. think he's a good story. Okay, and there's a All problem. Right, Sean, and I don't need there's to snark. the problem. No, I, I honestly wasn't snarking at you. I was just, yeah, I don't think Cyrus is the right person to handle this here, this character, because I don't, I don't know Superman. Okay, but I know he's more interesting than I've seen in these past two movies, and I just yeah, think really. they need he's, someone good at the helm. Yeah. You yep. need someone better than this, because otherwise, yeah, you get this. And Superman again, Henry, Henry Cavill, fine. I he he wasn't given anything. I don't think uh, he I disagree. I think he's really I, bland. I think he's bland. I, I his say, character's I, I, bland. You know, his yeah, he's also bland. bland. He also, has nothing. He's not really given a lot to do. This is the another problem with Snyder is that he just did not give anyone in this movie anything to do. Like, I think Ben well, except for Lex. are good actors. <laughs> are good actors. Okay, no, 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 no. We'll get to that goddamn guy in a sec. No, but with most of these characters, including Lois Lane, including even doing extent Wonder Woman. They're just not given anything to do. I, I see talent in these actors. I know Ben Affleck's talent. I know Henry Cable's actors, but 
Snyder's like, yeah, whatever, just say things in the lines. Maybe that's not how he, <laughs> that's not how he yeah, actually said it, but that's what it just comes off it. as. Just say the things that I have on the paper. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, Ben Affleck, let's talk quickly about Batman. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about how this bat. Like, can we not talk about how this Batman is so different from the past Batman? Yeah. Kind of over that now. Yeah, the, yeah, um, yeah there's way too much. Yeah, yeah the yeah, only I really, note that okay. I have is like yeah. I need to give some thought to him killing, because as I understand the character, that kind of ruins his central like turmoil and conflict. So it's weird they chose that. Yeah. But yeah. I don't care that much. I'm not yeah. one of the people that are like, oh, sacrifice yes. against the most perfect character ever written. Yeah, you know, no. Snyder, clearly this is a different vision of the DC universe, so I'm not that upset that Snyder decides to take liberties like that. Um, what I am upset about is just kind of how, I don't know, I think, I think Ben Affleck is a good performance here. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's solid, yeah, no. but I think that he just sort of, I don't know, I think he, he, he kind of sounds the same with everything he says, and I don't think his character really goes anywhere except for that one moment with Superman, but even then it's not really like... Like it doesn't feel like it was earned at all. No. Like the whole like, oh, now we're we've worked together. You know, yeah, it's no, like that was rough. Oh my god, that we'll whole moment was so. We'll oh, get god. to it. We'll get all right, to all right, it. All right, all right, all right. Um, but it's I don't know. It's just I, I like the costume. Yeah, no, yeah. I think oh, yeah, the costume. Costume. I think this was an excellent audition reel for Ben Affleck as Batman. I can see <laughs> that he cares. Reel. That he knows. I can tell he knows what he wants to do when sure. Snyder leaves. <laughs> Yeah, like and I, he's I gonna mean, make his own he's, movie. He's Woo! writing and directing and starring in his own Batman movie. Yeah, Isn't that right? he's gonna oh, write gonna be so great. a solo Batman movie with his friend who wrote the Academy Award winning Argo. Right? Oh, like this yeah, is quite. The did team. he do that with the, for this too? Yeah, he's Didn't, going. Well, he wrote with. He took over from Goyer's script, so I don't. But he's one hundred percent behind the Batman movie, and then he's going to direct it and he's going to star in it. He is going to do well in that. I I just I can't see this going wrong because he knows what he's yeah. doing. It's not him's fault. I do not blame Ben Affleck for this. In fact, I think he did way better than I expected with what he was given. Like when I was just kind of thinking about the scenes themselves and like the lines he was forced to say, like, you know what? Good job, Ben Affleck. You actually you actually saved a lot of that. So, yeah, I, I would give a, a thumbs up to Ben Affleck's performance. I'm looking forward to more. I just can in we, its can, own yeah. movie. Yeah. All right, this is this is becoming too down. Can we talk about Wonder Woman? Just just yeah. cover that real quick. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Freaking yeah, yeah. I, this I movie like made me so hype for the Wonder Woman movie. I cannot believe they did. All right, they screwed up everything else, but they got the first silver screen incarnation of Wonder Woman totally freaking right. Yep. Like, there's this one part, my favorite shot in the whole movie, where Wonder Woman gets hit, yep. and she looks up at the Doomsday, and she freaking smiles, and I'm exactly. like, yes. I was about to bring is, that up. It's not, okay, I would say it's a bit sexual, but I think the point is, is that it? she loves the fight. Yeah. She loves the thrill of battle, and that's I. That, that makes me so excited for Wonder Woman, and because that nobody was, in this movie is involved in that movie, you, there's some hope. That, nice. that was an unspoken character beat moment. Like, point to another. Which we one don't in get many movie. of. We don't right. get many of those. <laughs> and and that's and they got that part of Wonder Woman right. And again, like I said before, she was implemented in the plot better than I thought she'd be. I was afraid that she'd be like at that dinner party because we saw her in the trailer and then pop up for the fight at the end. Like, you know, I didn't know that was her. Uh, <laughs> really? I didn't like. I didn't like yeah, her I, side I plot what in the God film. I personally didn't. I personally didn't like her side plot in the film. I just think it took away from the film. But um, yeah, I agree. I like uh, what Wonder Woman, how Wonder Woman's being established as a character. I sort of like how she's mysterious, and I like yeah. how Batman just can't really get a read on her. Honestly, I think that's a wonderful this was, choice. This was kind of a. This was the, like the only benefit of ju- of tr- rushing to Justice League, where was getting we Gal Gadot knew early. all about the <laughs> Avengers and stuff when we saw them because they already got in a movie. But it was kind of cool to just oh, it's Wonder Woman. Hi. And like it was just kind of out of nowhere, and she was a little mysterious towards our main character, who of course is Batman. Batman's the main character yeah. in this movie. Um, yeah, it's a Batman movie. It is a, he, it's basically, he's a it's little mostly like, a Batman movie. Yeah, he's not sure what she's you know who she is and what she's about, and neither do we the audience outside of comic knowledge. So that was one benefit is that Wonder Woman did yeah. have a kind of a mysterious, otherworldly kind of. Now, what are you going up with that? What's what are you doing over there? Mm-hmm. So. One better. Yeah, I like, is immortal, yeah, like, I is like how she's like immortal. Is that, yeah. is that a thing? Yes, yeah. she's immortal. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, I sort of like how the character sort of pops in at the end, and they're like, um, "Well, you're pretty powerful, so I guess we're gonna we're gonna work with you." I just, yeah. I like, it's, I like that it's idea. Past the time for questions. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, actually, well, okay, okay. Before we get Support. there, 
Yeah, let's talk Alfred quickly about some supporting. Jeremy Irons was oh, great. Oh, Jeremy Irons was so cool. So MVP. Yeah. MVP of this movie. And you know what? Jeremy. Think, you think he like, knew what he was getting into and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I am the guy that everybody likes. <laughs> if I would say that, and to go further, Damn, I think that's a great thing for his character. I sort of love how, uh, how you know, Alfred kind of mm. takes no BS from Batman. Yeah. I think that's great, especially yeah, with how that dynamic. Batman's got gotten... Dynamic yeah, they, like, Batman's gotten... Yeah, they've got yeah, I'll like this. Batman's gotten old and scruffy and stuff, so like now he's just like, whatever, dude, just like just go fight, whatever. I don't even. Yeah, like I'll give him this. Alfred does help define this new Batman as somebody different from the other Batmans mm-hmm. that we've seen. True, and I did like his 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 role and everything. I you know if, if look if we're gonna get more DC movies, I'm down with this cast. I just it needs to be a different director. Like, and when needs- he starts when he starts piloting the Bat <laughs> plane. Oh Batwing. my god. I think it's the Batplane. Is it Batjet? It's the Batwing. Bat- oh, wait. Wait, was oh, the Batwing. Was it- Sorry. Oh. Whoops. My bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alfred, like, takes con- he takes control when Batman leaves. He jumps out. Oh. I was like, that is awesome. This is yeah. great. You know, awesome, we've never awesome explored Alfred. that if Alfred knows how to do Batman things. I honestly – well, they sort of bring that up because he sort of helps him in a way with some of the research and technology and stuff, which I like. And I think that that's a cool new thing for Alfred that never has really been done before. So I like that. Um, yeah. Lois Lane, uh, uh, Amy Adams. Uh, it's weird. Lois that... Lane. Look, <sighs> go ahead, Sean. Okay, I'll be quick. I just, it's weird that like f- for this movie, this as overstuffed as it was, they made time for that character. I'm not saying it was like well yeah, done or anything. And Amy weird. Adams again, like every actor, basically boils down to they did their best. <laughs> That's how I got, I well, got that. I actually Amy think, Adams I is think great. Amy Adams was good. Yeah, Amy, Amy Adams, Adams was good is a great movie. actor, I but in this, she's fine, and that's as best you could ask hope for. You know, with this with this movie, so. I have nothing else to say except I was surprised how important she was to the plot given how many other things were going on. So it, it felt a little bit more like a Man of Steel sequel in that regard. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Max, you're about to rant? Lois Lane? Well, okay. Lois Lane basically represents the, about 85% of the female cast in this movie who are just helpless all the freaking time. Just Always, and it's so frustrating because these characters are are not are not as a reporter. She does cool things. Why is she? Why is she always the weakest link? Like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, it just bothers me. Yes, Wonder Woman is freaking awesome, but why does freaking Lois Lane and Martha Kent and all these other characters are just so helpless against these brooding men? It's like this is why this movie embodies the very worst of the superhero movie. Uh, age it's just there's all this stuff that could have been that, have been, that has been resolved in elsewhere and it just uh, it drives me crazy it's like come on you guys can do better than this i know you can i know you freaking writers directors whatever you guys you guys can do better than this Ugh, mm-hmm. so uh, hmm. uh why is there Fishburne? An, okay why is it an awkward silence every time i talk come on guys this is what well, well, well i was trying to think if there's anything else for me to say on like supporting hey characters. i wanted to well, Max, I'm sorry I wanted to give you a dramatic beat, okay? I'm sorry. I'm a, <laughs> I apologize. Gotta, gotta, get um, gotta let Hans Zimmer just do the music before. Anyway, <laughs> true, true. Uh, Perry White, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. He's fine. He's the only one I, I, mean, I can, yeah, that's the only Perry one I White can think as of Lawrence them, Fishburne? Yeah. Is that what you said? No, I said <laughs> Perry White, White Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne. Fishburne. Uh, oh, and then there was, uh, there was Holly Hunter uh, as the senator, who was a, a, an interesting new addition to this yeah. universe. Uh, Good I actress. Wish, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say because I know we're not in spoilers yet, but yeah, I liked her in the set. <laughs> it was weird because uh, you know, for me, that voice is is Elastigirl. You know, how yes, far from incredible. Oh, so that's a little weird. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh, what? even know. And actually, I just caught the Incredibles oh. earlier today on TV. Or wait, that was yesterday. Yesterday on TV. <laughs> so great movie. A little bit of it. Great yeah. voice. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't unhear Elastigirl. I couldn't. It was just so prevalent. Yeah. I actually oh, didn't wow. hear anybody. Crazy. I didn't know who that was, and now I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna go back and watch it. But still, uh, I- okay. We should get to Eisenberg. All righty. Let's right. get to the big kahuna Mark here in the Zuck- cast. Can I, <laughs> Mark can I, Zuckerberg. I, can I say my thing? I feel like you guys have a rant, especially Max. Can I just get my quick thing out? I don't have a rant. But yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna start by saying this is the opposite of the character Lex Luthor. And normally yes. I, I don't really care about staying true to the source material. Comics, books don't matter, whatever, I get that. Or even like, hey, let's take a different angle on an established character. Heath Ledger took a very different angle on the Joker and it turned out wonderfully in the Dark Knight. And Nolan himself, like as an entire trilogy, took a different take on Batman. It worked out great. 
the problem I have is when it seems like at every step they purposely did the exact opposite. Because the only way I've seen Lex Luthor in all the different little variations, he's cold, he's collected, he's one step ahead. Mm -hmm. Right? That's like the core. And yeah, they sort of got the last part in there, but that doesn't really matter when the other parts are not in there. Right, and this Lex Luthor was completely scattered, completely unhinged. It was the opposite. Like, in every way they could, they did the exact opposite of the Lex Luthor that everyone else has done. That feels wrong to me when it's a 180. I'm okay with variation, but a 180 felt wrong. That being said, this was a delightful performance. Definitely the most fun character. That's what I've been saying since the very beginning. If you just let that go, he's so fun to watch. So much fun. And honestly, Wait, I guess it's just the... What? He's fun to watch. Don't give me this, oh, it wasn't grounded in the emotions. We're not saying to he's tone. good. We're saying he's funny in an it's, ironic I, way. So I'm not it's even being funny. ironic. I enjoyed this performance. And of course, I Wait, have like, the you... giant asterisk of, it is not the character, and it's not a well-developed character, a three-dimensional one, but the performance itself, like whenever he was talking, I was enjoying that. That's true. That is true. I'll, As I was watching, I'll give was, you that in some ways. I'll I'll talk more about. Uh, I'll go more in depth in when it was my turn. But I think I just kind of want to let Max un, unhinged. Yeah. No, go you ahead. know what, Larry? Yeah, just 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 go ahead. Just 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 go ahead and yeah, do your thing. Go. Okay. Um. I I kind of I don't know. There are a couple of scenes where I think Jesse Eisenberg just sort of lost it for me. Like it got oh, a little yeah, too yeah. much, especially the when he starts the, doing like the. Hum, 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 yep. You know when he starts the one like, at the end like that. And the one during yeah. the speech where he just like stutters for like forty seconds and can't think of a word. That yeah, was just I know. Oh, that was awful. Also, that was on the awful. editor. You have to cut around performance, that man. You you shorten that. <laughs> yeah. This oh terrible. Uh, but I think for the most part, yeah, I kind of I enjoy Jesse Eisenberg. You know, Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, it has sort of played Lex Luthor in a couple of ways. The cold, collected, one step ahead. But instead, he's a little funnier. You know, that's kind of a lot of his characters that he's played. Of course, there's more depth than that. But that's a certain, certainly an element to many of, the, many of his most famous characters. Here, he sort of goes unhinged. But he's just as deep and psychological, though not really deep, you know, on the surface. Um, and I really like it. I think there are a lot of great lines here, you know, especially from the trailers. We get a lot of great lines that evoke a lot of meaning. I like the whole painting thing where, like, the painting is, like, flipped and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's a cool idea. Um, I just think that his motivation makes no sense and yep. his character's all over the place and he was written poorly. But I think – I, and Sean, I get what you're saying about like I you can't really go for a complete reversal 180. It's a little too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, I think there is this sort of cunningness and sort of this ambition that Lex Luthor does have as a character that is instilled in the in the Eisenberg version. So I wouldn't call it a complete 180. It is a, a very large variation. But again. This is Snyder's universe, and in and in some ways, I admire that Zack Snyder is taking his own liberties with the characters to yeah. tell the story he wants to tell. It's just not a very good story. I'm All not right. going to go that now, far. Now that I think about it, I do wonder if Kevin Feige were directing the Marvel movies, just to see what that. I mean, what would that be like? I don't know. Oh. Okay. He seems so, to be very like cool, even though he's part of the business side of it all. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. All right. All right. All right. So... I don't really care that much about the whole it's it's not the character like whatever. Listen, Lex Luthor has been the same character for a long time, and yeah, some some flexibility, some uh, some variation would be fine. But here's what I don't really understand, guys. Why did you turn Lex Luthor into Diet Joker? You have the Joker. This is not one of those things where like it's like a sacred thing to not mention the Joker. So you try and make somebody else into the Joker. No, we have Jared Leto's Joker in this universe. We do. We're gonna see him in a few months. No, what you did was you turned Lex Luthor into the Joker for no reason. Look, you, I'm pretty sure you – now, there, there is one thing to this. is that Every time I bring up how unbearably awful this character is, people keep telling me, well, it's his son. Well, okay, first off, <clears> that, doesn't make, that doesn't matter. But second off, I can see what they're, kind of go, they're trying to go for. The first time we saw Lex Luthor was when he was in his headquarters, which had like a basketball court and everything. That is a direct parallel to Google offices. That is like yep. there's no mistaking it. I've no, been there. That. It's free – Freaking such a awesome, terrible, by the way. such a freaking such, no. I hated that first introductory scene. I, I couldn't oh, yeah. take him seriously no, when try, he took like, that shot. They are actually trying to make him into Mark Zuckerberg. Like that's not like, Ugh. and yeah, that's, that's not ter- an overplayed like joke. That's kind of what they did. Yeah, and I think it's like, and I and I let me maybe let me be clear. I love Jesse Eisenberg. I think he's a great actor. I like genuinely, but 
I what the I don't like there's so much wrong with this character. There's so much. There's no motivation. Like, there's no reason this guy is hanging around outside of I don't like Superman because, well, I mean, Lex Luthor doesn't like Superman. Am I right? I don't <laughs> like Batman because, I mean, Lex Luthor doesn't like Batman. Am I right? There's no logic here. He, he, he brings up, like, his issues with God, with his daddy issues, with his – like, it's – a again, a, I'm pretty sure this character represents everything wrong with, with Dawn of Justice. It's just – it's been changed – in a way that's not the, not lo- lo- logical. I don't care that the character was changed. I care that the character was changed for a reason. Like, yeah. for God's sake. That's sakes. a thing about – that's a big thing in movie. I was actually – I showed a recent cut to my – the professor of the class and he asked the director and I why we did this certain thing that on the first cut he said he didn't like. And, I, and we gave the reasons and we said, but, you know, we can try to fix it. He said, no. You know, I just – I needed to know your reasoning. You ha- you You know, you had a reason. You know, it follows, so keep it if you want it. And that's that's a really good philosophy in film. Your reasoning Check is important. Check out gun. Everything has to have a reason and a purpose. Right. Sorry. So, I, yeah, I don't know why they did a 180. Yeah. Maybe that's what bothers me more than – yeah, no, that is. That bothers me more than the 180 itself. And yeah. I was so hopeful. I was so hopeful that all the people bashing this performance from just the trailers and talking about how it's just Snyder oh, ruined yeah, the too. character. Because what I was hoping was – the haired, you know, foofy, um, uh, 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 Mark, Mark Zuckerberg impression, uh, Joker light. That character, <laughs> that was this facade. And then there was going to be a scene where he was in his own private quarters, whatever, and maybe Batman himself came in and he said, ah, welcome, Mr. Wayne. And then he takes off his stupid wig and he's real Lex Luthor and he's calm and collected. Uh, and, and, the, and that was hidden in the trailers, the actual Luthor. No. No, in fact, he gets worse in that sense. Like he gets less like the character in the it's movie. Interesting. It is, it is interesting that the whole like hair thing that's actually a part of a uh, the story. Was, I don't no, it's actually in the original Superman movie. Like he's, oh, he yeah. had like Gene Hackman, I think his character. Yeah, like, has that exact thing. Yes. that's not an excuse. I'm just saying maybe that's where they got that idea. No, it, no. I think the. In fact, I'm not going to spoil exactly how, but the reason that he loses his hair is really annoying to yeah, me. I wish really they could have done dumb. more with that. It's really. I don't even think it's that realistic. I was like, okay with it, but whatever. Uh, whatever. Um, is that it for characters? Yeah, because maybe I, I guess so. Let's see. Yeah. Oh. Man, it's might be a two. I think, I think that's you. Yeah, we, I don't, we I don't can think probably, Doomsday's a character. We've, we've hit through the main stuff. So okay. I think. Yeah, let's let's talk about action because yeah. this is the one part. That I have positive things, this, I like legitimate know. positive things to say. When Doomsday showed up, I was okay, digging fun. it. I was down with the movie when that was happening, and the I'm going to explain itself why. Was a dumb idea, but you know. Yeah. Oh well, well, I mean, no, to no, be not fair, Doomsday, done- the creation of Doomsday was a terrible oh. idea. Oh, like do you mean Frankenzod? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was, like that I, term. I heard rumors about that. Sorry, I, 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 I prayed that cannot be true. That can't. <laughs> Same. Dang it. It was also really rushed, too. Like, that idea is brought up in the very beginning, and then it doesn't come back until, like, maybe an hour later. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I agree. It was, it's not the best uh, decision to make the character. But I think, I think see, when the, first, when the trailer was coming out and Doomsday was revealed to be, like, the big thing at the end, I think a lot of people were giving the movie flack, uh, especially through the look of Doomsday. But you know what? I don't care. I like Doomsday. I like the look. I like how his look sort of, uh, throughout the action scene, he gets more of those, like, yeah, uh protrusions yeah i like that i love when he surges like his energy surges i could watch that like i i could watch that sequence like a hundred times and never get bored it's just like it's i don't know like there's so much adrenaline and i think the fight is so like you know when we talk about man of steel an action is one of my least favorite parts of man of steel because the final action scene with zod and man of steel feels like two hulks punching each other mm. like that's that's what it feels like the whole time and it never goes anywhere past that here, we have so many different dynamics at play. We have Superman, and then we have an actual Hulk fighting Superman. Not two Hulks, Superman fighting a Hulkian creature, basically, except even crazier. Doomsday feels like a threat in this movie, which I really uh, appreciate. I disagree. Then we got I, – I felt he was a threat for Superman. I also felt that – with we had Batman using his technology on the side, and then we had Wonder Woman who joins the fight, and she has her own thing. There's so much more variety. There were good in moments this in that beat. fight for sure, like when they both yes. laser at each other. That you too. know, Doomsday that and Superman too. laser a thing, yep. and you know the big Trinity moment, which we won't describe because spoilers. But you know what I'm talking about, where all three right. kind of come together on him at one, at one like big giant action. It was cool, you know. Yes, 
But yeah. for me as a whole, I think Batman's action looks good. Um, I mean, it's you know, it's really, it's really weird, Sean. They kept putting like gameplay videos from Batman Arkham City in there. I just don't know why they would do that. <laughs> it was <some> weird. Uh, <laughs> like I get cross promotion, but um, so. Uh-huh. But the problem that I had was I'm at a theater that is what I read about this being an issue where they their projectors are running. You know, their 3D projectors. But they run the movies at 2D, right? Like this, they use the same projector, and apparently yeah. that's a big problem because it's still dark. So you have no idea how underlit this movie was for me. This was oh, hard to oh, follow. Wow. This interesting. was interesting. Really, I, was, really. Especially I never noticed that, this. Actually. Is a Snyder movie, and it's a Batman oh, yeah. movie. It is really dark. Na- actually, mm. name me the, the 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 scenes during the day. There's like four. Oh yeah, <laughs> so well, that's well, yeah, you have like, but, yeah. but you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah. So true. It was tough, but from what I saw from the action, it, it, it seemed fine. Now, there were two – there was a highlight and a low light. Do you mind if I address those really quickly? Because <laughs> the rest right, of it yeah, sure. are kind of yeah, sure. in the middle. The low light – Highlight, low I light. I tweeted about this. So you guys probably – you might know this opinion of mine. The low light was the actual Batman v Superman fight. The V of yes. the Batman v Superman. Right. I, I, it was all right. It I, was, I thought it was all right. Uh, I, it I didn't feel it was a really well executed fight. I, I, cr- I couldn't stand how they kept use, how he keeps using that specific thing to even yep. the fight. Yep. I'm so See, tired of that. Here's, here's what Batman vs Superman would be interesting. If you did Batman's abilities versus Superman's abilities, right? But what yeah. happens is they turn Batman into a tank so he can't do his stealth and acrobatic stuff. And then yeah. they – well, that's kind of spoiler. Some stuff happens with Superman that kind of changes the tide a bit. If you catch my green glowing yeah, drift. I, get, I understand what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> they never they never mentioned it by name, and maybe we shouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Anyway, why I didn't like the fight is because it didn't feel like a, like a back and forth. It felt like it was just one person won, and then just switched. So it was 100% one person yeah, winning. Yeah, I agree. Then 100% the other person won. It just went back and forth in the bad way. It wasn't like they were yeah. evenly matched with their abilities. It was just one was completely powerless, and then the other oh was completely God. powerless. And it just... That's not interesting to me. And it was that's in not, this little warehouse. Fight. You know what? Yeah. I think that's the big like underlying problem with the entire idea of Batman v Superman is that they're not – Is that it's, it's as if the person running the story was like, no, it's a dumb freaking idea. Like Batman v <laughs> Superman? No, no. It's dumb. So – but I mean the fans want it, so we might as well just do it in, other, in whatever dumb way we can find. Like I'm pretty sure the movie doesn't even believe that the I- idea of Batman v Superman is a good idea. Yeah, because most of the movie isn't that. Lex yeah, is well, the villain. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's, like, oh, good lord. Guys, Civil War, I think until the very end, will have Steve Rogers and Tony Stark at each other's throats. Ideologically so speaking, excited. they will fight each other. Baron Zemo's there, so we know that there's kind of this third party villain. I get that, but I guarantee up until the climax, they'll be fighting. In this movie, yeah. the climax is triggered because they stop fighting. That's bad. Yeah. yeah. Now, see, I That's I, just I, bad I storytelling. Felt the- well, yeah, I agree with you. The, I think oh, Batman look, the main character Super- is Batman, right? Sorry. The main character is Batman. His arc is complete. Yes. Guess what? We have 30 minutes left in the movie, as in the entire climax. Yikes. Your character resolution Oops. happened, and now it's your climax? Oof. That's... Yeah. That's uh, bad. You call it an arc as if there was, like, a slow buildup. I would say it was more of a high jump in the air, and then it's the ground again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, so, like, there's no arc until there is one. Wait. Exactly. Can I just say, I think, the, I think I like the idea of Batman v Superman ideologically. Just, sure. I, I, but I will agree with you that the fight was just – it was sort of like – I kind of agree with Max in the sense that it was kind of giving the nerds what they wanted. You know, you have the moment where Batman's beating up Superman and then you got the moment where Superman's beating up Batman. And, yeah. like, you know, the fans yeah. have their own little moment. It just goes back and you know? forth. To, yeah. Yeah, it's not a good However, fight. It's not a good fight. That being said, high point in terms of action. And it is a scene that will almost certainly be one of my favorite scenes of 2016. What? Yeah. I know. There we go. Out of all this negativity, there is one just for me seen Civil War undeniable. <laughs> okay, this I haven't seen most movies. I'm excited for this year. Yeah, okay. but this one scene just absolutely blew me away, and it's the opening sequence. I loved it. The Man of Hold Steel on, climax. Mean... Yeah, the Man oh, of Steel okay, climax. Part, I kept thinking you were talking. Okay, you told us this in a message before I had seen the movie, and I kept thinking, is he talking about the whole? Origin story, like things you've seen. Oh wait! Times? Oh my God! You're talking about the moment where Bruce Wayne's in Metropolis. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I thought no, you see, meant I, the I, Batman that's origin. The of the movie, honestly, that's probably the best part of the movie. It is. Damn. I, yeah, I agree with like, you. It's a really good part. And, now, here's the thing. This isn't even me being. Oh, good. They're addressing the 
you know, irresponsible destruction of the Mass Steel Climax. I don't care. I, that's not why I loved it. I loved it because for the first time in a superhero movie, when the destruction happened, I was scared. It was a frightening sequence. These things, the way it was shot or edited or something, probably shot because we were down at Bruce Wayne's level. These things were so big. That machine was so big and foreign and it felt so far away and unstoppable and imminent and this unavoidable death. It was genuinely frightening. And these two, you know, you couldn't really see them. These godlike figures just tearing apart things with ease. They felt threatening. When you're up with them, you know, when Superman's fighting Zod in a skyscraper, you just kind of see them up close and, ah, oh, rubble flies, you get the whatever. But when you're down at the street and you see the skyscraper crumble ahead of you, it was effective. This is an approach that more movies should take, especially superhero movies, where try to shoot it as if you're caught in this, because that's what Bruce Wayne was. He was caught in the middle of this fight. It was incredible. And it's how the movie yeah. starts. I was off on a really good foot with this movie, because that blew me away. Maybe and that's so, why I have such a bad pace in my mouth, because I enjoyed that scene so much, and then the rest of the movie happened. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, I, I mean, like that, that part where he's like, anyone. where's your mother? And she just points up at the building. It's like, yeah. oh, she, it's and like, the response. that's great. Why? The, what the? What happened? You and, it was and, so good. What happened? And Ben Affleck's acting as a response. Just this minor yeah, facial thing. It's like, oh, well, she's dead. I can't, like, when he, he basically gives up, he knows he can't do anything and just kind of tries to comfort the young girl as best he can. Like, it was a really good moment. That scene's incredible. Yeah. If you can, it's a great scene. just see that scene when it comes on TV. Just watch that scene. <laughs> it's, in, it's just stellar. I'll, I'll be impressed that's really the best Batman v Superman this year as a scene. Batman. Like, I'm sure there are scenes that have more impact because of the movie around them. It's just amazing. I get that. But as just a standalone scene, I doubt 2016 can top this. Blew me away. Anyway, yeah. you guys can continue probably my, back. Probably, uh, probably my favorite moment with Ben Affleck is that first scene. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. give it that. Yep. Um, I'd, I kind of brought it up. I mean, I think the Batman v Superman fight is weak. And I think ultimately it's pointless I think it would have made a lot more sense if Batman v Superman were at their at you know sort of at odds ideologically and then came together and fought together. That's why I think this should have been called Batman and Superman, <laughs> not Batman v Superman. Um, but there was not really that much action besides from that. There's like there's this one part in the opening, but that's really kind of minimal. Um, but yeah, I think the I just think the Doomsday scene was so much fun. I had so much fun watching that scene. It was the one moment throughout the entire film where I was like, "Yes, I'm enjoying this. This is awesome. I am down." I don't know if this is necessarily good storytelling or anything, but I'm 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 just I, it was a smile on my face. I loved it. I felt like I was in the movie at that moment, which is none of the rest of it. Yeah, uh, oh, Max, boy. you got anything you want to bring up? Um... I think the action was kind of bland. I mean, I didn't, I didn't dislike it. It's just kind of whatever. Like again, I, I, I'm really, I'm really thinking that somebody, the fight choreographer or Snyder, was really a big fan of the Arkham games. He just really just wanted to make that into a movie. <laughs> and I'm not even making that as a joke. Like they are designed like the Arkham games. Like yeah, I can those see are, what you mean. Yeah, it's like I know that everybody made that joke when the, when that trailer came out, but it's like I, I wish it was just like an exaggeration, but it's really not. And <laughs> Look, okay, and I really, I guess I have sort of a bias on this because I really do love the action scenes of Man of Steel because they're just, it's just such a force of energy and power personally. But I mean, to be fair, I, I did like the, I did really like the, uh, the Ben Affleck scene in this movie. So I, action is whatever. I was too distracted with everything else I didn't like. So I was like, whatever, you know, nothing stood out. Uh, yeah, was, okay. Sorry. It just kind of dawned on me, dawned on me, uh, with the dawned. opening of ah. Metropolis. This, this the scene was from the point of view of someone powerless, and that's never the case in superhero movies because they literally have power. Especially I mean, Batman, of right. all you know, people. There's like one scene in like uh, the Avengers where like this woman is like walking out of this thing and she watches as New York is like crumbling. That's right, really the that's only it. example I can think of. Right. Yeah. It's like one yeah. shot. Like I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I get that you shoot yeah. the movie like from a protagonist's point of view, and so like it's hard for super movies to do this in other con- in other situations, but. Try guys, because this was effective. This is a, this is actually you know, making me I think of Pacific Rim and the young world. Asian girl of Pacific Rim. You yeah, remember that, that, that scene in Pacific scene. Rim where the yeah, young Asian girl? That was the best scene. Yeah, in Pacific Rim. It was the only good was scene great in scene. Pacific Rim. Hmm. Hmm. Like I anyway, so I didn't mean to bring up that like, debate with like mobile, like somebody on their phone, like running from like New York or Pacific yeah. or whatever. Just like I mean, that would be very effective to show. Oh God, this movie's so bad. We're actually starting the anticipation for a distinguished competition. 
Hmm. Uh, let's. Can we move? Okay, we have uh, to talk about the spoilery stuff, though. We yeah, have. I yeah, I know. I was gonna. I was about to ask if there was anything you guys wanted to bring up quickly before we move I mean, on. Um, hey guys, what was? Oh, what was the um? What was the theme for Batman? Like the musical theme? I I, cu- I couldn't tell. I, I couldn't what was really the theme? tell. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. I was too busy worrying about the erratic strings for Lex Luthor and the oh, rock guitar Lord. for Wonder Woman. Yeah, I don't know uh, if that which I which I kind of like that they're do, being a little creative. I don't know if tonally it works as well. Although for Lex Luthor it sort of works. I do kind of like the strings, but the rock guitar for Wonder Woman is a little much. But um, it I already like, know Superman like a YouTube I, fan edit in a few yeah. yeah <laughs> I also know Superman's theme. <laughs> that's Superman's theme. So. I love Superman's um, theme. That's not yeah. The, that's in the, Man of Steel, it was amazing. Best part yeah, of the, the Man of Steel. But in this movie, I'm saying dead. Man of the, the Superman's theme is just wow. and visually, uh, so, like it looks like a Snyder movie, and that's yeah, cool. Like when, at times, yeah. good visuals. So oh, yeah, yeah I mean it's are, a visual okay. extravaganza, but it's gray as heck, and it's boring. Yeah, especially in my projector, it was tough. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's put up the spoiler red tape yep. again. Let's final scores: I, five out of ten. Yes, four point five out of ten. Three. So yeah, now we're um, going spoilers. If you and, care, uh, here's a. Th- yeah, yeah. If you care enough about the spoilers, um, leave. Bye. Yep. Um, you know, I'll be honest. There were some. I was. I was kind of surprised by like how much I would did not know about the movie. Like there were some parts that actually like got that caught me off guard. Big well, hey, time. weren't spoilers? What? What were? What were they? Well, I was. Well, specifically the suicide bombing, which I was like, oh yeah, oh. Yeah. and it, it occurred on me right before it happened. And but then the other one. Uh, I kind of saw it coming, and I was like, "They would, they would, they would, they wouldn't. Come on, they wouldn't." And then they did. They killed, they killed Superman. Soups. They well, killed, it's killed back good old so. Soup. Yeah, I know. Oh, right? Yeah, I was. I was, I was like, I, 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 I said out loud in the theater, "I'm like, you really did, didn't you? You really, you really just pulled that through because you guys just don't even care. Like, really, guys." Well, okay. And then here's one thing: I will defend this. Movie. I'm going to defend this. They have a good reason uh, for killing guys, Superman. They do. Oh, because well, I've read an interview. Well, what's the re? Oh, what's the reason? And it's not in this movie, so you know, for this review, it might not. You know, I, I get the whole like we we're talking about the movie, but I get that. But Zack Snyder said that he wants Bruce Wayne. He, he wants Batman to have to assemble the Justice League. <laughs> that does seem more oh. interesting because Superman yeah, just rides up. It's like never, I'm the so tired of, this of Batman bias. No, but think Ugh. about it as a character. What is Superman doing to convince them? Nothing. He just strides up. It's like, hi, I'm. This godlike pinnacle, whatever, like come join me and fight evil. I get that, but Batman, that's more interesting. He's mortal. He's going up against no, people you know way above him. Wonder Woman doing it. Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, she'll join him. They're both going to do I, it. I, no, I want her to be like the leader. I freaking seriously, like, uh, okay, I'm well, right, Wonder we're, Woman. We're up with Max and Batman. Jeez. Um. Yeah, I see. I thought that was the re- I thought that was the implied reason in the film, except that they never bring it up, and yeah. it would have worked perfectly given the plot. Step um, away from the microphone. Uh, yeah, Microsoft I, Larry. It was for dramatic effect. I, it was a bad um, dramatic okay, effect. So, okay, so I think with spoilers, I I I just kind of want to you know say a couple of things about the spoilers and just kind of go over a few brief moments. Um, I didn't get the whole jar of pee reveal yeah, until it I, happened. I think that was actually. Kind of like that. Okay, listen. I don't like Lex Luthor in this movie, but I think that spoke volumes about his character, and I kind of like that. He said, "Remember when she said like you can, you know, you can take a jar of piss and call it Mama's peach tea or Mama's peach juice or brandy." Well, juice yeah, I, I get that corollary, but I didn't ex- expect anything to blow up. I it's know, to that show that wonder. like he is like taking her up on that. Like he remembers. Oh, oh, I remember what you said to me. You're gone, and that's I, that's what went. To, oh, Finch okay. is awesome. I really liked Finch, and then she died, and it's like, okay, well, thanks, movie, thanks a whole yeah. lot. And Shame. you know, funny story. I'm pretty sure that scene is lifted from my favorite comic book story, which is Kingdom Come. It's the climax of that movie, and it's exa- okay. I won't say what happens in the comic. book, but that or the comic, <laughs> comic. I won't say what happens in the comic, but it's pretty much what happens in the movie. It's like that exact same idea, and it's like, it's like you just. You just took King Come and you gave it an actually okay, maybe not so terrible thing in this movie. Yeah, um, but I just I, I like that it sort of put that connection there. But I I felt that it, it wasn't it wasn't really that obvious. Um, I also again, if we could just touch upon the Justice League part with like the metahumans yeah, yeah. file, I'll say no this. sense. Yeah, no sense. No, Cyborg felt awkward. 
No, no, no. I was weird. Yeah. A cyborg that movie's not coming out for freaking four years. You guys I know. Like, what's up with the what's up with the weird blue box thing? Like, well, okay, that actually, if you watch that. Young Justice, you'd know what that. Yeah, but that's it's the Tesseract, that don't you know? Oh. <laughs> it's um, the Tesseract. But Aquaman, <laughs> what was that? He just like stares at the camera for like twenty yeah. seconds. Like, why yeah, did that last so long? That was I weird. know it was weird. Yeah. Anyway, he sort of has his own really because I guess like he was trying to have a beat, but the beat was being slowed down so much because he was underwater. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Was I like, think the uh... big meta human. Okay, the big meta human to address here is the Flash, who I Flash love was, for the record. That was see that was good. The security footage thing where right that was really well handled. I loved the yeah. idea of the Flash on security this camera. This little rat is guilty. <laughs> you guys, no, <know>? okay. <laughs> don't you Bernie me. <laughs> Good scene. Good I just scene. got I got that same vibe. But so, no, incredible so, reference. We've already, you know, had yeah. incredible Now well, I want to transition with the whole flash thing into the vision. Not to be confused yes. with the cooler character. <laughs> so that vision pisses me off. And it's yeah, because what was that it's, it, about? Okay, God, first off, I understand what it is, but like I'm just like, God, that's so weird. It's first off DC put, it. pointing out, hey, look guys, flashpoint. We remember the whole flashpoint thing, which whatever. Uh, but I don't think it was flashpoint. Is, I really don't, you don't think, think it was so? Flashpoint. I mean, no. isn't it doing the same? Right. They're kind of gonna, okay. I think Justice League is going to be like a mix of Flashpoint and Injustice Gods Among Us. Really? Yeah, I think it's kind of going to be Injustice really? too. I was I getting mean, the Injustice the Fla- vibe. Flash saying Lois is the key you were right about him seems like Lois gets killed and Superman goes all tyrant. That's what happens in Injustice. Okay, yeah, that's true. But okay, what I want to talk about is the fact that this scene makes no sense no sense and its only purpose no is to make batman even more afraid of superman that is the only yep. re- it is like how do we get here lois there's never a point where lois is in danger there's never a point where we're like oh well okay i understand why uh, why she almost died there is no connection that scene was only in there for fan appeasement and that's maybe one of the biggest problems with the movie it is so concerned with how fans react and then they just make a bad movie, and that's how fans react badly. It's like, guys, come on. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, the nightmare I is what you're referring to, I assume. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. The nightmare. The nightmare. You, you keep saying it's vision. Like, and uh, then the, the flash coming in made sense. And by the way, that was real life. I just, people are like, was that part of dream? No. Flash can't go into dreams. He can go through time, though. So that was that was, that was was real. And also, there are papers wait, what, that wait, what time period did he go in? Like, did he go like five oh, he's, minutes before? Justice League, he's going in Injustice League, he's going to run back and try to stop something. You know, I mean, like in that moment where he comes through the portal, but we don't see until he wakes up. So what that'll be like seconds ex- later, probably. Because papers okay, are yeah. still like he falling wakes, down, but like from, he wakes like, the up. Last though. of time vortex. Yeah, yeah, but, but Batman. This movie he handles post credits. Like, like yeah. th- this seriously, Ugh. the CW shows handle universe building better than these movies. <laughs> like that, yeah, that's, yeah that's which is interesting thing. actually cuz cuz I've seen I'm seeing a lot of crossover with those shows. Yeah. That's funny. Um I think I yeah, I that made no sense. I don't get why Batman has all these this weird nightmare. The nightmare the, has so many references in it that make absolutely no yeah, sense. How to does his he character. know that dark side's coming? Yeah, and how does he know and how do those minions show up? Does he even know what those minions are? Right. How do those make like, any Nazis. sense given a dreamscape? They'll have um, to do something with like the new gods. If you, uh, there's so much backstory. Darkseid's yeah, and, uh, one and, of the new gods, but he's evil. Anyway, there could be visions of like warnings sent to Earth. Like maybe. Yeah. Um, and by the way, that's the one thing I liked at the very end. I liked the scene where Batman confronts Lex in the prison cell, except Lex at the end. We're like, ding dong, tick tock, whatever. Oh, it does ding, that thing. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. But that actually felt substantial. The fact that Superman is dead when he said that, like, the bell's been rung. He knows the god is dead. Like, ooh, that's a great line. That's a good setup for Justice League. That was a legitimate, like, I got a little goosebump. Like, that moment was awesome. Yeah. Because that, that felt was substantial. Wow, Darkseid can attack now because there's no Superman to guard it. Very nice. And then. Like you got Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's awesome. She's immortal. Like, she's oh, actually yeah, no. immortal. But it's just like the idea of Superman not being there to defend. Like, ooh, that does make Earth more vulnerable. So, yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah, so. I just. That was like I, mean, I did like. I don't, yeah. That was since when did Lex Luthor know that? Like, oh yeah, that uh, yeah, but since when did, no sense. What, yeah, when did Lex Luthor know that aliens existed or something like that? Whatever. Um, it's no just idea. so much, just so character. many, and yeah. yeah, it also makes no sense. Why does Batman care about a metahumans folder? Why is he snooping around? How does LexCorp have that information? Why does LexCorp care? You know, it's just like all of these. What if? What if that? Really like, we could have made this movie much more interesting if it. <laughs> all right, if it was actually Ben Affleck. And he needed to build a universe, so he became <laughs> Batman and tried to build a universe. Like because that makes just as much sense as anything that's going on in this movie. 
Like, hey, okay, make he's Ben Affleck now, now, in the, the opening. Now, the whole metahumans thing, I believe that belongs to Lex, though. I think that's the whole yes, thing. Yes, that's what that, I said. That's right. what oh, I, that's oh, what I brought oh, up. He steals the files. That actually does make sense. He Lex. was trying to find out where the kryptonite was and then yeah. f- checked on those files because he was curious. But that's what Wonder Woman mm-hmm. was after and the photo. Yeah, yeah. but why, why would he be curious about that? Because he's Batman. He's a detective. That actually made sense oh, to me. Uh, it, it still felt like, and also, did you guys notice that the exact specific DC logos of all those characters were in the LexCorp files? Yep. Yeah, because LexCorp's graphic, the, graphic design, design team, like you know, they, they, yeah. they're on retainer. Yeah, they're 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 they have a lot of fun and stuff. Um, and look, look, no, look so those are the same guys that made that really awesome logo for the movie, so I'll, I'll give them credit. Mm. I'll give them credit. Okay, okay, okay. Just, one more thing. One more thing. Martha, we gotta talk about Martha. Oh yeah, see, I want to bring that up because, in my opinion, in my opinion. I like the – in theory, I like the connection between yep. Batman and, v- and Superman with that aspect. I'm not exactly. saying literally the their mom's both name – both of their names are Martha. I'm saying that they both have this par- this parental loss in a sense a, that connects them. It's hilarious yeah. that no one had ever brought up the fact that they, their mothers have the same name. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, it's interesting. A piece of I never, trivia. I, 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 I only that. like realized, oh, they have the same name. Right. That's interesting. The idea I like. The fact that Superman's like last words where he's about to be impaled by Kryptonite Spear is begging his killer to rescue just, you know, his mother, like his a family member. The name itself was just there, I think, to trigger. I think you could have played that really well. I like the idea a lot where Batman's kind of confronted with the fact that this is a person that, you know, he's not this threat to humanity, that he's just trying to save his mother in his last moment. Like that's, now, that's, that's a powerful happens, scene. Though. That's a yeah. powerful scene for Superman 2. This could have been a really great scene. People in the audience, as we got it, people in my audience laughed. Yeah, they laughed. Yep. And so, I see okay. why. There was, a, there was a scene where people in my audience laughed too. I remember what it was, but it was supposed to be like a like a genuinely like impactful scene or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't remember what it was though. So yeah, that being the giant resolution, in theory, I'm all a thumbs up. Yeah, Even if totally, you have to yeah. use something as, as trivial as they have the same name. I, honestly, that's fine. It just was not handled correctly. And just no, the movie it, didn't it, build to it no. properly. Like, this just was not yeah. a good enough movie the to justify is, it. The thing is, the way that it's cut implies that it just goes back to Bruce's mommy issues. Instead of, like, confronting Superman as, like, this person, right. it's like, oh, my God. That's a you, really you, good point. Your mom is also named Martha. Oh, my God. All right. All right. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Let's just, let's just go and do things. That please. is a really yeah. good point, Max. You, yeah. yeah. It good. wasn't about yeah. – that's not what – Batman stopped because mommy's dead. No. <laughs> the, the, the thing that you should have done is Batman stops because he realizes, hey, this is a person that that's actually seems good. And it reminded me of my own humanity. Maybe I see a bit of myself in him and shouldn't stab him with giant spear. That's what you giant should have spear, done. Giant spear, by the way. Dumb idea. No, why like a spear? Idea, but you could have done that. It's like a kryptonite spear. Cool. But why would you just like sharpen a rock? <laughs> like it could have been Yeah, done but also better. like. That's that. That's such like a close range weapon for yeah, a character for who Batman. can literally fly and go everywhere. Like, thank God he made the gas, also. Yeah. And the bullet, right? Was there a bullet? Did he shoot him with kryptonite at one point? Or did he no. just, or was that just the gas? No. Also, that how, the no, gas, right? the, a plot thing. Yeah. How was Lex framing Superman with high tech bullets? What was that? Yeah, that, yeah like, that Lois was, Lane had the thing. What I like, like the starting okay, movie makes no sense in that. Like, there's yeah. a clutter. And, okay. This movie is not cluttered. It is a pigsty of ideas. <laughs> it is so so many different things are going on at once, and, then, and a lot of them just don't have any connections. Like the whole bullet yeah. thing. Uh, we okay. Do we need more evidence that Lex Luthor is the bad guy because he gets put that. in jail, not because of that, because of you know the whole Doomsday thing? Well, I understand Luther's trying to frame him, but I mean, like, I think I think we got that opening scene, and for so long in the movie, I'm like, what does that opening scene mean? What yeah. are you talking about? Killing people? I have no idea. What and then he's like, he's framing him, and I'm like. How do bullets just frame Superman? The, oh, yeah, I know. It's terrible. Uh, also, I brought this up in the review. I want to bring it up again here in a specific moment when um, Lex is talking to Superman on top of the building. Yeah. And, you know, he brings up the photos of his mom. I'm again, I'm just I'm so upset of how little character driving is happening here. The whole conflict, the whole reason that Batman and Superman fight isn't really a character driven ideological thing. Lex Luthor just tries to play them. The only time anything is ever character driven is when Batman is driving the Batmobile. That is the only time. The only <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> uh, good one. Very good. Good Very one. Good. Um, but it took yeah, me I seven just, like, hours to think of that one. Well, yeah. worth it. And and 
Worth and it. then like and like Lex's plan is so convoluted. He tries to play them against each other, and yet he still makes Doomsday. I'm like, well, I mean, it's smart that he had a contingency plan, but like it just. It I guess so. That's a pretty crazy contingency plan. Like, yeah. He literally gets the fingernail, uh, not the finger, the the fingerprints, thumbprints, yeah, fingerprints of Zod to get into that ship. I'm like, geez, man, it's crazy. Um, that's all I have to bring up, uh, spoiler wise. Yeah, just yeah. okay. They it, killed yeah. they killed Superman, and it just made me mad because. Okay, first and they didn't off, even go how are you gonna get around? I know, I know. Listen, I, I know. I was just the whole time was like, "Why are you kidding me?" And then at the very end, yes, we saw the whole. I don't know what that means though. The whole like the dirt, dirt particles. It's just a well, cool like, when, visual. That's all it is. It doesn't mean. Well, well wait a minute. Yeah. I thought when Superman flies, like the stuff sort of starts levitating around yeah. him because he's like, pushing okay, down in, so hard on the ground. Yeah, like in Superman Returns, when Superman like actually returns, I think that's kind of interesting. I just think that's like you know when like. It's when the world, you know, that's in that point, it's not that he's dead, it's just that he's gone. Like, he's just left. He just left. In this case, he's dead. How is he going to explain the fact that, you know, uh, Superman's dead and also Clark Kent is dead? Oh, yeah, that's and then hilarious. They both come back. Yeah. And then they both yeah. just come back to life. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be this weird. is just, this, okay, it's because you want to take, you know, you want to take Hughes for the death of Superman, which was never exactly a well liked comic book to begin with. It was just important. Never was it, a liked comic book. Yeah, like it was just it was big because it was it killed Superman. And now, what are you going to do next? Like, are you going to do the whole thing where they have four different Superman before Superman comes back from some pocket dimension, uh, whatever? Like, no, it's not going to be enough to get the audience except super niche fans. This death is so dumb because it's supposed to be like, you know, because. Supposed to care, but guess what? Superman was never well written anyway, so we don't care. Yeah, I didn't. Nope. Dumb. Yeah, well, I didn't. Yeah, and Sean didn't of care. Of course, they have to do the whole thing where they got to get the nuke, they got to send it to kill Superman. It's like we've done this so many times. Come on, guys. I if didn't so believe that he just died. Guys, we're getting the Joker. Why change the nuke into something different? Like <laughs> for God's yeah. sake. I didn't even believe that he died. Like he, I guess he dies because the kryptonite like goes through, like because he gets stabbed by Doomsday. Yeah, which that I mean, but it's like only, his it's only, cells. No, the thing that's explained is that form. only crypt, only Kryptonians can kill other Kryptonians. That's the yeah. thing. And okay, Doomsday so, is kind like, of, sort of, maybe Kryptonian. Uh, so right. yeah, but the whole kryptonite just, thing. I mean, I like how he impales him. I think it's pretty interesting. But like, yeah, that's cool. The weird thing is, Lois Lane is like, "Oh, I gotta throw this away." Oh shit, he's, he's, I, I forgot. Whoopsie doodles. I, I threw it in there, and now I gotta get. Yeah, it. I know. Like, I was so, I was. I was honestly That's... thinking that Aquaman would bring it up to her. Uh, right? I was thinking that Aquaman <laughs> oh, was gonna show up in the so very cool. beginning when they found the kryptonite of the ocean. I was like, "Is Aquaman already coming?" Oh my god, is he already? And appearing? I thought I wanted I them excited. to be fighting. Honestly, I would have been happier with the climax. I know it's weak to just add characters for no reason. I would have preferred if they had all just showed up and had a merry big Justice League fight. Give me Flash. Oh man, love the Flash. Bring him in. Give me Aquaman. I like Cal Drogo in Game of Thrones. Same actor. I mean, and I, 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 I guess mean, I, like I could like Cyborg. I, I'm not exposed to the character much. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. give me. But they yeah. did. Instead, uh, we got again post credit scene. Okay, in the movie. Here, I think this is the big problem here. As much as we rag on this movie, there are parts of it that get us excited for the other movies, which might be the whole freaking yes. point. You know what? I think that's a good place for me to end on. The, yeah, after I think Man we're, of I think Steel, we're start wrapping up now. After Man of Steel, I had zero like hopes or like, oh, there's potential for a DC cinematic universe. Zero. After seeing this, there is. I already talked about how I think Ben Affleck gets on his own. He will do a very a great Batman movie. And Wonder Woman was done well here for the screen time she had, so I think her own movie is going to be good too. And, you know, I love The Flash. Ezra Miller's a really good actor. Uh, Brooks Bane Wallflower, he was great. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm excited for the future, and that's that is a plus I can give this movie. As painfully implemented as its setup was, and as broken as it is, there was enough good, and there was enough interesting things being set up that yeah, I've not given up on the series. I've given up on the Justice League movies because I just don't think I just don't think Snyder can, is going to handle them well. But nope, when you give it to other it. writers, you give it to other directors. I think we can actually like those movies can rival Marvels. Give it to me. I will make Superman <laughs> interesting. I promise you. I will make Superman an interesting character to to like watch and enjoy. I will do everything I can to make that happen because yes, this character is interesting. Yeah, sorry. I just sorry. Uh, so on that note, uh Suicide Squad is next. Well, oh, we're all excited okay. for that one, I'm sure. Yeah. I just um, I just want to say one thing. Just one more thing. Look, okay. I've ragged in this movie. I've ragged in this movie, ragged in this movie. Do you know what I did when I got home? 
What'd you do? I pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition. Why? Oh, because dude. I want to see. Listen, listen. Just I, I thought it. about it a lot. Cancel. I thought about it a lot. Max, and if, if you only respect I don't think you, it's gonna be cancel. Pop- cancel. I, I'll probably cancel, but I just, I listen. I understand when there's so, when I understand running times. I understand that Zack Snyder's like, all right, listen, this movie has to be like three hours long or more. Like it just has to be like that way, that way. because Joss Whedon was saying the same thing about Age of Ultron. We never got that. We'll never get that that three hour cut of Age of Ultron. I want to see if this stuff makes sense. I just, there must, like, these people are not just new to this. They have been making films for a long time. This, this, this disaster cannot just be because they just didn't know what they were doing. This movie is such a mess, and maybe, maybe this over three and a half, over three hour radar cut will make some sense. I don't know. It's not, it's not the comic book nerd, nerd me talking because there is no comic book nerd me. Rent. All right, rent final. it I, hopefully Cancel. i can i mean i don't know if this movie's gonna be like I, i'm pretty sure they're gonna put this ultimate edition on like a pedestal like you have to buy the blu-ray in order to get that you can't rent it yeah you can only get the theatrical version if you rent it i'm just, I'm just gonna borrow it from, i'm just gonna borrow it from one of my friends who buys it probably because they're all fans yeah. of that uh but yes. all right i think we're just gonna end off uh, unless yeah. any, does anyone have any closing comments they'd like to make nope. this movie is bad it should feel bad it's bad. I'm yeah. sorry. It's bad. The yeah. fact that I mean, people I'm gonna, I, like genuinely are like, no, nah, man, DC's just Marvel. No, man, DC movies. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't understand no. it. People keep I saying, man, Marvel it. movies are all the same. Superman movies. No, no, no. Marvel is not the worst part of this of this format of this genre. No, it is DC. It is Dawn of Justice. It is the thesis statement for suck. <laughs> uh, I would give I would give a couple other companies some some uh, ragging on, but um, um. But I guess I'm just – again, I would like to just reemphasize that I just didn't care about this movie. I didn't get myself invested in it. I sort of was detached from it a lot, and I think that's why DC just annoys me with their films. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, – I just – you know, at least, Sean, I will give you this. With Man of Steel, any of the ideas that Man of Steel had, I just didn't like. Uh, and at least Batman v Superman has some good ideas. And, you know, people people thought about the good ideas, and they touched upon some of the good ideas. And we just didn't get any of them executed, really. Uh, so – yeah, there you go. The Envy Suit Band. Again, we have a 5 on Sean's end, 4.5 on my end, and then a 3 on Max's end. So you kind of have a good idea of where we stand. Um, we don't really know what we're going to be doing next. Yeah, I don't know. After this. Jungle, jungle Book? Yeah, yeah. Jungle Book. Jungle Book? Yeah, I guess. I'm, hey, I'm going to be seeing right? the Jungle you know? Book. Uh, yeah, yeah, John yeah Favre, I'm going to see it for sure. And we'll see if we want to review oh, yeah, it. Totally. We probably will. That sounds good. But we'll do something before that because that's a ways off. So we'll think of something. Yeah, we'll probably uh, – maybe we'll do so another SNL Studios it's, it's maybe. It's just like two weeks away to be fair. Like it's, Is it? Like these – yeah, oh, it's, it's like yeah. two weeks from now. Oh, uh, the semester is yeah, ending really. so quick. Oh. We're getting close, Sean. Oh. We're getting so close. Anyway. Uh, you guys are graduating soon. Uh, yeah, but right. uh, maybe we'll do an SML Studios. I've been kind of craving to oh, do yeah. one of those yeah, episodes again. Yeah, it's been again. a while. How to do a DC uh, movie. How, hey, SML Studios, DC movie. Yes. We'll reboot the entire yes. DC Extended Universe. Oh, let's do it. Uh, I'm so down. I'd Please. rather just do a singular movie. No, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah. overruled Larry. I, I, I'm putting the executive no, order on this. Sorry. Doing I, this. Oh, I'm sorry. A one person overruling. Um, anyway, so uh, we're going to sign off here. Thank you guys so much. Of course, the typical comment question, uh, what do you think of BBS? And uh, I guess an additional thing is which character, uh, singular character of the Justice League, are you most excited about getting their own movie? You have the choice between Aquaman, Cyborg, The Flash, and Wonder Woman. Uh, so be sure to let us know. I was going to say Flash, know. but man, what do man? I'm ready for Aquaman. I can't wait to see what Aquaman gets in his movie. Um, but anyway, that's a lot of time we got. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Larry. My name is Sean. And my name is Max. And you'll hear us later.